This is my old CNC laser engraver. And today we're gonna talk about why this absolute unit is better in every single way. So this video is gonna be all about this new Creality Falcon 2 40 watt laser. That's right, 40 watt. This thing is a beast. Now, just for reference throughout this video, I'm gonna be featuring this Offro Laser 2, which is a 5.5 watt laser, I believe. Now, this unit is rated for 15,000 millimeters per minute, and this unit is 25,000 millimeters per minute. So the first thing I wanna do is do a little comparison, a little material test on both of these, which will just do a bunch of grids, increasing the speed, increasing the power, and we'll see our results. So a frustrating part of running this laser CNC for me is being the fact that I need to run it off of the Lightburn software, or whatever software you wanna use, on the laptop itself. There's no way to directly run a program off of it. Now the Creality Falcon 2 has an SD card reader built into it, so you just load up your G code and hit play. Simple as that. Now another thing that is a little bit fussy about using this unit is it just has grid markings here for where you can lay your material out. The Creality Falcon 2 has a sweet feature called frame. You hit the button and it runs the G code, but not really. It runs a perimeter script to show you where you need to position your material. That saves so much time and headache in trying to line up everything and figure out where you need to place your material like you do on this old Offro Laser 2. So let's go ahead and run the test. I'll use my laptop to run this one. And the SD card has the code in it already for that one. And we'll see how it does. And there you have our results. You can see the Falcon 2 did amazing. It pretty much eliminated everything in the slower speeds, regardless of power level. And all the way at the highest speed, at the lowest power level, we're still able to see some burning. Now, you can decide how much you want to engrave or burn because there is quite a depth here. Like, this has gone pretty far into the wood. You'd probably want to engrave somewhere around this level up here. But anyways, the Falcon 2 did great. The Offro 2 did not. At some point, it decided to give up the ghost and just quit in the middle here. I'm not sure what happened. I did try to run a piece of code at the end to just do my logo on the backside here, and then it quit again two-thirds of the way through. So I'm not sure what's going on with that, if that unit is messed up or whatever. But a big part to take away from this is you can see that where it was cutting through the material, it was pretty much burning it. Now, the reason we don't have this issue on the Falcon 2 is because it has integrated air blast. This is the little air pump, and it has a hose that snakes its way through the cat track all the way into the top of the laser, blowing out a good gust of air through it. So nothing catches on fire, and we're left with really crisp lines. That's probably the main difference here, is we're getting super clean edges, and this is just kind of burning its way into the material. Now, one thing to note is that we only got up to 18,000 millimeters per minute because I accidentally set that as a threshold instead of 25,000. But I think you can see going very much faster, we'd have to be at max power anyways, so this gives us a good point of reference. So another difference between these two units is this Offro Laser 2 just has these standard little mounting feet right here, and there's no adjustability. Honestly, they're pretty hard to mount down to a surface so they don't slide around on you as well because they're bent inwards. Now, this guy, the Falcon 2, it has these adjustable legs right here. It has three little sections and it also has three holes underneath so you can store them if you're not using them at max height. Now, one optional thing they did send me, which I didn't know they're gonna send me, but I'm super happy they did send me, is this little cutting tray at the bottom here. This allows you to get your workpiece off of this base plate here and allow any chunks to fall through the bottom when you're cutting away material. So speaking of optional extras, here's a pretty sweet one. Ta-da! So yeah, I came home one day and there was a nice little package on my porch and inside was this, a full enclosure for this unit. Now it has a little viewing window on top to protect your eyes so you can see what's going on. Now for the purposes of shooting videos, for the rest of this video, I'm not gonna be using this as it's really hard to film through it and see exactly what's going on. But in the future, when I'm doing all my projects, I will be using this. This thing works amazing. It has this little dust shoot out the side 
So I can leave it in my garage and just run it out the garage door and it just throws all the smoke outside. This is an absolute godsend. I highly recommend getting one of these as an optional extra. So let's talk about a few features in this machine that make it extremely safe. Right here on the front of the laser, we have three indicator lights. This tells us whether or not we have air. We don't right now, the machine is off. If we have a fire, it's green, no fire. And if the lens needs cleaning, the lens is brand new, it doesn't need cleaning. Over here, we have an on off lockout key if you don't want your kids touching it. Then we have an emergency stop. My other machine did not have this and sometimes it would over travel and it would just crash and make loud scary noises and you just rip the plug out of the wall and freak out. This e-stop, you're safe. Down here we have our homing button. Now we're able to do this with this machine because it has limit switches on both the axis. It's able to find its home and those limit switches also act as over travel protection. It'll turn off the machine and it won't crash. Also we have our frame button and our start stop or play pause button. Now this machine also has tip detection. So if it like falls off the table or whatever. So let me show you right now, I'm gonna set it to frame and then we'll tip the machine. Oh no, it's falling. And just like that, it's turned off. Super safe. Well, seeing as this is a laser engraver slash cutter, let's go ahead and test out the engraving function. So all we need to do is set up our stock right here. And it comes with this little stepping tool right here. It tells you for engraving cutting basswood one to three millimeters, four to six millimeters, cutting greater than six millimeters. So we'll put it at the engraving height. Just undo this thumb screw, lower it onto it and tighten both thumb screws. Take this out of the way, and now we can go ahead and frame in where it is. Well, that worked like a hot damn. Sorry about that. Anyways, yeah, so it engraved about, I don't know, a quarter of the way through the material, so I'm sure I used too much power. Probably could have run this at like 20% power and been just fine. But anyways, it engraves, that's great. This is not the reason I'm super excited about this machine. The reason is it's got the 40 watt laser and can cut through material like butter. Let's go ahead and run the little Eagle template code they send with you when you buy the machine and see how that goes. And there you have it. In a matter of no time at all, we have this super sweet looking eagle cut out of that two millimeter plywood like it was butter. The, the level of detail on this thing is actually astonishing. There's no way you could do this with a CNC router. With a rounded router bit, you'd never have all these fine pointed details. Not to mention it would be way too aggressive and this piece would probably go flying off somewhere or get sucked up into my dust collection. So next I wanna to demonstrate to you the sweet laser adjustability feature this thing has. Because it's a 40 watt laser and you don't need that all the time, there's this button on top to switch between normal, meaning 40 watts, and precise, which is 22 watts, lowering the output. Because you don't always need that super blast of 40 watts. Now I'm gonna demonstrate this by cutting a few pieces on normal and precise, and we'll kinda of cut a dovetail pattern and I'll show basically the amount of kerf it cuts, like the material it blasts away. And you'll see that we have a lot less slop with the precise, giving us a nice finer line when you don't need that oomph of cutting 40 watt power. Okay, so we have our two samples. This is cut on precise, the 22 watt, and normal, the 40 watt. I'm gonna go ahead and pull these apart and measure them. Again, these started at 100 millimeters square, so we'll see what we get. We got 100.24 and 101.47. So what is that, an extra 1.2 millimeters or something like that? And the way that's working is it's not that big of a gap between each one, it's just because it's compounded four times and these angles, and it really, amplifies the kind of extra kerf you have with the 40 watt laser. But there's your results all in all, both are still really great. 
Next up, I want to try cutting out some quarter inch plywood. And for that, I'm going to revisit an old project I made, which was my Corgi side table I made out of half inch plywood. I'm simply going to scale that project down by half and use this bad boy to cut it out. Let's see if it can handle it. And just like that, we have all of our pieces nicely cut out, laid out in front of us. Let's go ahead and assemble it and make sure it works. While you watch me put this together, let's take a minute to talk about the packaging this unit comes in. I didn't film an unboxing, but it does come in insane amount of packaging. Nothing was damaged and the unit does come pretty much fully assembled. The only thing you have to do is install the laser module, the air pump, and then screw on the feet and she's ready to go. So now that the world's cutest tiny corgi end table is made, we can move on to our final optional extra, and that is the rotary axis. For this, we unplug the Y axis and plug this in, put it underneath, put our risers in full extend mode, and then we're gonna go ahead and try, first of all, engraving my son's name into his little tumbler mug. Okay, so I've just messed around, obviously spelling my son's name really badly here a bunch of times, and what I've discovered, it doesn't tell you in the instructions explicitly, is you have to go into light burn, go into tools, and go to rotary setup and input all these parameters, otherwise it doesn't work. It leaves you with the elongated words and all that jazz. Anyways, hopefully this goes well. I'm gonna try putting my logo in my actual day-to-day -day tea drinking mug. That's right, I drink two liters of tea in the morning. Anyways, let's give this a shot and see how it goes. So the roller engraving turned out fantastic. The logo looks great on here. Now onto my favorite and most anticipated part of this machine is one pass half inch plywood cutting. Let's go ahead and see if it does it. And there we have it. The half inch plywood push stick is fully cut out. One pass, the machine does what it promises. Now I'm super impressed with this Creality Falcon 2. I would highly recommend you get this machine if you're into this kind of thing. If you want it, go ahead. There's a link in the description down below and we'll see you on the next one.